All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started and welcome everybody to our Amherst community chat for Thursday, April 8th. Uh, today we have Public Health Director uh, Emma Dragon joining us, as well as your Town Manager Paul Bachelman. My name is Brianna. Uh, we were supposed to have, have Captain Steve Gone from the Amherst Fire Department here with us today as well to contribute to the conversation about vaccines and the homebound program, but he is actually on a live uh, fire call and couldn't make it. He, he sends his apologies. Priorities, come on. <laughs> yeah, duty calls. <laughs> so um, let's just get started with a couple of general updates from um, Town Manager Paul Bachman before we hear from Emma. Sure. Uh, thanks, Brianna. So on Monday, the town council approved um, borrowing authorization to build a, to, uh, a new and re restored library. And that uh, initiates a process for us to begin um, receiving funds from the Board of Library Commissioners, which um, will uh, make the project more um, cost effective for the town because we're able to do it in, in this fiscal year. So we're excited about that decision um, by, the, by, the, um, by the town council. Another thing that's happening is um, not this weekend, but next weekend is the first farmer's market, which is kind of a real harbinger of spring. So that will be again this year on the town common, uh, not in the in the Spring Street parking lot and using the same protocols that we established last year. And I mean, this, this will be a topic that may come up later today, but you know, there's a lot of conversation about what's going to happen this summer uh, with COVID as the vaccine becomes more, um, more ubiquitous and, and and available to everyone and you know we don't we don't know right now we have we are not going to be holding our fourth of july fireworks uh display because that's a clear probably not going to happen but you know in last year at this time we were canceling all events uh this year we're sort of like maybe delay in terms of see how things work out so uh, one of the good signs, I think, is the two colleges and the university have both said that have all said that they plan to be open relatively normal and uh, um, relatively normal way in the fall. So I think there's um, light at the end of the tunnel. We kept saying, and now it's like getting brighter and brighter. So it's kind of exciting. Great, and I feel that too with the with the spring weather and the outdoor mm -hmm. dining tables and. Mm. flowers and everything going yeah, I in. didn't even mention that that's true yeah yeah so if you're if, take a peek downtown next time you go through the the heaters are out there there's these beautiful planters and local flowers um so it feels like spring mm -hmm. so dragon has joined us multiple times um on these community chats but i'd love uh, for you to introduce yourself to to folks who might not know you yet Oh, sure. So, so I'm Emma Dragon. I'm the health director for the town of Amherst. I started this position in November. So um, with two feet in, just boots on the ground, getting a lot of great work done. Um, couldn't be happier with the vaccine clinics that we've been able to run. Um, our uh, contact tracing for our, our COVID, our, our collaboration with not only our fire department, but our, our public safety and uh, other departments as well to help support these efforts. Uh, and, and our new homebound vaccine program, which is really being led now with the partnership and under the guise of Captain Stephen Gaughan. So I will miss him on this because he's definitely a great partner um, with that, but I hope I'll, I'll be okay to fill in with the content he was going to share. Great. Thank you. And we have a lot of questions that have been sent to us that we've been getting over the last few weeks from uh, community members that we're going to, going to pose to you, Emma. Um, so I also want to remind those who are live in the room, feel free to contribute your questions or comments to the Q&A or raise your hand via Zoom, star nine from the phone so that we can hear from you live. Um, I think one of the first things that we've, um, we've been hearing about a little bit more, you mentioned this homebound program. We know Captain um, Gone was supposed to be here to talk a little bit about that, but can you say what that is? Um, is it just for Amherst? Can other towns sign up for this or what other 
criteria. Yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, Amherst is sponsoring, uh, the homebound program, which is really being led in partnership with the Hampshire preparedness coalition, uh, in partnering with that. So we are providing homebound vaccine, meaning, uh, individuals that are unable to leave their home or require to, person assistance or an ambulance to lead their home uh, for vaccine. So under the direction of the state with certain guidelines, we're able to provide that on a regional level here. Uh, We are performing that for all 20 Hampshire County communities, including Sunderland, uh, which is in Franklin County, but right next door to us here. So we're just just so happy to be a partner for them. Um, And for that, We have an online form, which is on our our town COVID website. We also have a phone line that Amherst residents can call here. Uh, If we have residents of other towns that are in the program, they can call their Council on Aging's or Board of Health to get enrolled. And uh, then we get them on our schedule. We try to organize assignments based off of uh, locations so we can do it in a expeditious manner, an organized manner. And then Steve gone with the assistance of our health department staff helps coordinate that. Um, And then we have a great team of public health nurses and as well as our fire department paramedics that come out and do those vaccines. And how many, how many vaccines or how many patients have you had through that program so far? Yeah. So we've done over 2000, uh, not 2000, I'm thinking of our clinic, over 200 vaccines uh, with the homebound program so far, which is over 140 patients uh, in about 10 communities, which is just incredible work. Uh, and, and we're just really happy to be able to go out and, and connect with those people, those families and, and make them feel acknowledged and, and valued. And if you have somebody that you know that is homebound that would be benefiting from this program, uh, Dragon mentioned it earlier, but AmherstCOVID19.org slash vaccine, we have a link there for the the homebound form uh, as well as a phone number if you have want to call call somebody. So you mentioned a little bit about the the general main vaccine clinic. You were about to say something in the thousands. So how, how many, how many people, um, or how many doses have been given out at our clinic? Yeah, that is another really exciting number, which is just under 7,000 Brianna this week, we're going to break 7,000 vaccines, um, which is just shots in arms, incredible work that we're doing for our community, um, between the regional Northampton and Amherst sites, we've administered over 27,000 vaccines together, which is just um, about half the vaccines that have been administered in Hampshire County. So just incredible work by public health. That's really impressive, especially now that we, we see this big focus on these mass vaccination sites. It's really, it's really important to highlight the, the work that's being done locally in, in our community. So one question that I think I've, I've been monitoring the, the info, uh, the COVID concerns line, and something people are asking right now is what, what doses, what brands do you have? Do you, are, we, are we doing all of the available uh, brands or what, what would people get when they come to our clinic? Yeah, so that's a great question. So first we started with the Moderna vaccine. We continue to administer Moderna for uh, some first, but mostly second doses. Uh, We also have the one dose Johnson and Johnson vaccine, which is we do some clinics with that. And then our the majority of our vaccine that we get allocated from the state with our regional collaborative partnership is that Pfizer vaccine. So we're doing all three, Brianna, which we're really excited about. And I, and I know recently that I think maybe just yesterday it was announced by the governor's office of how regional collaboratives like Amherst and Northampton are now going to be part of the, the pre-register, the state's pre-registration program. Can you, can you tell people what that means and how they go about even um, getting getting pre-registered? Yeah, so we're going to be doing a mix of continuing our what I call our live registration for new appointments on Wednesdays at 11 o'clock that people can expect that on our town website on the Amherst night. You know it by heart, Brianna. What's the website again? AmherstCOVID19.org. 
There you go. But you and can then, get there from our homepage. There's five or six different buttons that lead you there. So whichever one's easier for you. Yeah. And people now, like you're saying, are going to have the opportunity to access appointments after they pre-register through the state system. So to do that, people would go to vaccinesignup.mass.gov and you would put in your information. And then after you pre-register, you would get weekly status updates from your preferred contact method, whether that's your cell phone or an email. And then as appointments become available near you, you would be contacted by the state. And then you would be provided a link to select an appointment within 24 hours of obtaining that link. So a little bit less pressure. You don't have to feel like you're constantly by that computer um, to be able to make appointments. And, and we are really excited. Uh, Amherst and Marshfield are the first two regional collaborative sites to be able to provide this. Um, so it's just really a, a great time for us to know that we're going to be able to access that for our, our constituents, for our community members. So is that available now or is that going to be available? Yeah, soon? so that, yeah, sorry, Paul, I'm just so excited mm -hmm. about it. So <laughs> our, our appointments started going out through the state um, yesterday. So we've already had several appointments, quite a few booked through that pre-registration method from the state for this coming week. Very exciting. And that's not the only kind of update in terms of how we're getting people registered. We We recently are switching to a a new platform. Um, and I know there's some advantages to that. If you could, you want to let people know what those are? Yeah. So the state is changing over software platforms from a company called PrepMod to a new company that's a Google-based platform, which is much more comprehensive, titled Color. With that, we have the ability for individuals to, it saves their information to be able to book their second appointment on site in a, just about 10 seconds while they're here, and it will be able to track first and second doses. So um, it's really more comprehensive. Uh, it, it has that nice visual and experience for the user. Um, so we're really excited about that. And one question we've been getting a lot, um, you know, people who have had their first dose with our clinics, how do they go to, about getting their second dose during this transition? So do you have any tips for those folks who might be wondering that? Yep. So starting with appointments for people who came for first doses, April 1st, we've been emailing them right after the clinics with links to schedule for their second doses. If for some reason people don't get that email or aren't uh, comfortable or tech native to be able to figure that out with the internet, we are happy to assist them. They can call us here at the health department at 259-3077. And then I, I do believe we've gotten several calls on the COVID concerns line, um, but I know here at the health department, we're also able to help. Let's, let's talk a bit about the COVID concern line because it's a really, I think one of the, one of the hallmarks of our success as a town is that you know, we early on in the process, I mean, Brianna, you set this up, we set, had a special call in number and we dedicated staff to answering all of those calls either in real time uh, on weekends or we call back everyone who calls. And that has really set us apart from the 211 call that the state has set up where they would promise us a return call within seven days or something ridiculous like that. And that's not what people needed. So it's been quite an arduous uh, task because we've been doing most of it with existing staff and the people in, in our office and then been supported through uh, the health department and the Council on Aging, the Senior Center, all have been sort of chipping in to help find help people find vaccines. And it's an ongoing effort, especially you know when you, we were um, struggling with prep mod, which is the old system of signing people up. It's it, everyone's experienced at home who was trying to set up through that system. Just take that experience and multiply that you know a thousand fold for the for our staff who are answering the phones here. So the fact that we're moving to this new system is good. Uh, but I just want to give a shout out to this to the staff who've been answering all those calls, mm -hmm. but it's people call with a lot of anxiety and just the urgency of needing to get the vaccine, which we want to help them get. And then we were always limited by the supply. So it seems like, I mean, Emma's good. Look, look forward to your interpretation. It feels like there's more vaccine sort of in the air, um, or at least they're reallocating it differently. Um, 
And I think it'd be interesting if people know how there are different channels for vaccine to come into the state. It's not all coming from one source necessarily. Is that oh, accurate? That is accurate. So there are really two different streams. There's the federal allocation, which there are a lot of the pharmacies are under that partnership, like CVS, Walgreens, Big Y, uh, all of those pharmacies get direct vaccine from the federal allocation. Uh, the state of Massachusetts also gets this other bucket, which then uh, the Department of Public Health has to distribute um, in an effective manner. That's where the vaccine for the majority of the mass vaccination sites, the general sites like the UMass vaccine site at their campus center, which is fantastic. Um, and then the local boards of health, the local and regional collaboratives get a bucket out, uh, a little slice out of <laughs> that state bucket. Yeah, I don't think um, it's a whole bucket. Yeah, I was well, waiting to see yeah. what, what noun you used there. <laughs> Uh, I started to say bucket and then I was like, it's not a bucket. Maybe it's got some holes in it, dear Liza, but we're going to make it through. Um, yes, I, I agree with your feeling, Paul. I, the general sense is that more vaccine is on the way. Um, I think with more people becoming vaccinated, the ability for eligibility for people to sign up, kind of opening up so that everyone will be able for the to register and pre-register following April 19th is just really exciting to see um, more people feeling more comfortable with the vaccines, having less vaccine hesitancy and seeing the good impacts that it can have with our community. I, I wonder um, with, with potentially the requirements opening up on April 19th for, for all, what, what do you recommend for people to do now? Should everybody just pre-register and get on there as, as part of the process or? Yeah, I, I don't see a, a reason why people shouldn't feel comfortable pre-registering. Even if you're in the queue for that pre-registration system, there is no reason why you couldn't possibly still look on the CVS sites or for other new and upcoming appointments. I think any extra way that people can feel like they're going to access that vaccine sooner than later, closer to home in the way that's going to be right for them. I want to encourage everyone to do that. I'm just going to take a quick pause to say uh, for those who are live in our, in our Zoom room or watching us on Facebook Live, again, feel free to post a comment if you're on Facebook Live or use the Q&A and or raise your hand in Zoom so we can hear from you um, if you have any questions about public health or about general town um, happenings. Well, so, one thing, oh, go ahead, Paul. I, I had a question. So President Biden announced that April 19th was a date to make everyone eligible. Does that automatically flow to the state or have they, has the governor agreed to, to that same deadline, that same um, opening? Yeah, actually, uh, Massachusetts had already planned for that date before Biden announced it. So that was great to see that Massachusetts was planning even ahead of the federal government. So April 19th, it is open for anyone 16 and older for vaccine. And I so, know that they're doing some research for uh, the, the children right now and individuals under 16. So mm -hmm. hopefully that availability will come out after the FDA reviews that this summer. Um, but for right now, it's individuals 16 and above. And is it your understanding that if someone were 16 or 17, that they'd automatically get flagged for the correct brand right yeah. now that is possible uh, for that age? I think, especially with the new system titled color, I believe that is in the software. Um, with PrepMod, it's, it's had to be a little bit more um, human dependent rather than computer generated, but color does seem to have those built-in abilities. That's great. Well, one thing uh, while we wait for anybody to submit a, a live question, uh, you know, this has been a long year plus and there's loads of other public safety, public health um, issues and concerns that haven't really been as much in the spotlight lately. So are, are there other things that that you see as important public health issues that people should be paying attention to um, in addition to COVID? Sure, I, I always like to highlight mental health. I think mental health and wellness is definitely an area where we could all improve with our self-care um, 
reaching out to our family members and friends and making sure that people are doing okay and supporting them if they're not doing well. Uh, I know with springtime and nice weather, I'm starting to see lots of individuals out on their bicycles or maybe rollerblading or skating. And just remember people remembering that even with that nice weather and those fun activities to do them safely and wear helmets so we can reduce concussions and head injuries. Um, and then also with the sun, even though it sometimes it doesn't feel very hot outside right now, still being aware of the ex sun exposure and making sure that we're protecting our skin uh, with sunblock, I think are really important. And one thing I'll, I'll it's might maybe not a public health issue, but you can tell me if it is or not. Um, and I know our assistant town manager would be happy to hear about this, that uh, with the warming temperatures, people sometimes feel inclined to go jump into Puffer's Pond or, or some of our rivers and to be really conscious that the water temperatures are still extremely cold. And to think before you do something like that, it might be 70 degrees out this weekend, but the, the middle of Puffer's Pond or even at a certain depth is very, very cold and can lead to shock very, very quickly. Yeah. And we had an unfortunate incident several years ago um, yeah. around this time of year. And it's something that we try to remind people of. That's, um, that, yeah, that's a really important one because, you know, young adults and, and people with their kids, you know, you think, oh, it's so warm out and you start to wade into Puffer's Pond. And that, that was, you yeah, know, that was just two years ago or three years ago. It was at graduation, um, a recent, a very, you know, just a recent graduate attempted to cr swim across Puffer's Pond and didn't make it and because of the cold and, um, and there's nothing you can do about that. And it's, it's just very, um, it takes a long time for bodies of water to warm up. And so people need to be really careful about it. And you see people wanting to go to Puffer's, right, when the weather starts to warm up and we're happy about that. But um, we have to be incredibly vigilant. I just don't want to see have a situation like that again. And we do have signs, I believe, if they've not been posted today, they should be shortly um, at both Puffer's Pond and Stanley Street Bridge, which are popular uh, swimming holes in Amherst with this information to that effect. And we'll be also sharing this information out with the mm -hmm. broader community. Good, good, good. Um, but if your friend is looking to go swimming, just give them, share that information with them. Um, but the, the one thing we are going to do, we are going to open up our swimming pools a week earlier than we normally do. So that'll be earlier in June than typically. I think the water still would be cold, but people have been, you know, we've been all pent up so in, in our homes and, and not able to do the things we normally do that that'll be a good thing for our community, I think. And speaking of pools, um, again, I want to give one last call out for anybody to who is in our room right now, feel free to pop your question or comment in the Q&A or raise your hand. Um, we are, I guess my, my train of thought was, we speaking of pools, we are hiring a recreation director, mm. um, which has just been posted. So feel free to share that news as well. Um, a very important position in our town, especially as we look into these uh, warmer weather where people can be outside doing these activities. Mm -hmm. So one thing I wanted to give um, Dragon a chance to do is something that wasn't asked of you or some sort of call to action um, regarding public health or, or COVID or vaccines that you could leave the community members with? Sure. Well, actually, th this week is National Public Health Week. So I just wanted to, um, which every year is the first week of April, and I, I wanted to celebrate all of our public health workers, uh, nurses, community support individuals, our, our interns for the health department, all of the town employees and countless departments that have helped us uh, support the public health efforts that we've had since with the beginning of COVID. Like, like you said, Paul, all of that support with the COVID concerns line, just incredible. Mm -hmm. And that have made um, our response possible for our community. And also to help us address health equity during the COVID response, especially in Amherst. Um, we continue to have that on the forefront, but really just celebrating everyone's work this entire last year, but especially this week for our public health support. So thank a public health worker if you um, speak with one or interact with one this week, but but hopefully all the time. I'm sure it goes a long way as, as Dragon could attest to. 
All right, so we're coming up at the close of our of our 30 minutes. Paul, is there any anything that you wanted to ask of um, of Dragon or anything you want to leave the community members with? I think we covered a lot of territory already, so thank you. Yeah, Dragon's answers are very efficient and um, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> she gives a lot of good information concisely, so we appreciate you, Dragon. Thanks, Brianna. All right, well, I'm going to um, say thank you to all who have tuned in. We will put this up on our channel within the next hour or so, and we'll be back next week at noon, um, as well as every Thursday at noon. We'll see you then. Great. Thank you.